This is an iPad. We are Goody Reader. This is not an e-reader. Yes, we are very well aware. However, the world of e-reading has changed and a lot of people prefer reading on LCD LED tablets as they're more of an all-in-one machine and you don't need a secondary device. Also, the iPad is packing something that is becoming more and more popular in the past five years, digital stationery or a stylus pen. We're not going to bore you with specs and apps, instead we're going to look at e-reading, PDFs, manga, and of course, note-taking. Thank you to Apple for sending us a sample for our review. You guys aren't here to watch us teach you how to use an iPad, because you don't care. That's not what our forte is, it's not what we're here for. But we'll just give you a quick overview, there's some stuff on the left that kind of give you these cards of different things that are going on, you can edit it, you can add things, remove things. Top down is where you're going to have notifications, you have some widgets in the middle, you have all everything icon based, you can move stuff around, wiggle it, add new folders, delete things, all that kind of stuff. You can swipe over to your alternative pages if you want to add more pages of stuff, or if you have too many things, you just keep kind of having endless pages of of applications if you swipe down nothing happens it actually just for the most part triggers that side thing you do have to swipe it down from the very edge bezel you'll see me there in a FaceTime video I was doing and you see a bunch of other things that are going on when it comes to the things that are working on your your device in the background so you can swipe things away like that files settings etc we'll look at books in a second settings has way too much stuff and again you don't want to hear us blathering on but Apple is a very good ecosystem. It's a very well-developed infrastructure. It's arguably one of the best consumer level products you can buy, iPhones and iPads and iBooks. They're just so clean. Everything works. Everything's simple. Learning curve is far less than an Android device. You're not going to have any trouble with an iPad. As long as you keep it in the family, deal with iBooks, deal with the iPad, store with the app store never go outside and try to root it and change things and alter the overall functionality of it it's could be the best thing you've ever used with that out of the way we're going to be looking at the things you're here to see us talk about and that's pdfs and magazines and books and all that kind of stuff so we'll just look at some content this is a magazine downloaded from the store not you not only can you just do a pinch and zoom you can tilt it and kind of really get in there and look at it the way you want and you can throw it down to the bottom if you'd like as well the quality is just it's so good on an iPad screen. Some of you technical people will be saying, oh, it's the same screen cell as this one, and there's certain, you know, crossovers between Samsung and iPhone screens and stuff like that. Well, that aside, they do deliver a very good, fluid, smooth, crystal clear image. And the beauty about Apple products is that you're not going to have formatting issues. With Android devices, they're going to be long, they're going to be wide, they're going to be square, all that kind of stuff. So you're going to have formatting issues. But Apple, for the most part, everything's just kind of made for these devices in such a way where it just looks flawless it's pinned to the sides and it doesn't give you too much of a weird kind of experience when you're diving into it it just looks so good you can swipe up from the bottom that takes you home otherwise you'll have to tap in to get some extra elements because there's nothing on the bar here looking at the store you can go to what you're reading now you can go to your library of what you've downloaded we'll show you those in a second or you can go to the bookstore now because this is the Japan lab we're in here at Goody Reader we're getting a lot of Japanese content of course you can still get normal content as you see, we got the little prints, but for the most part, it's going to be the Japanese market. So you have a bookstore and you have the manga store. And with certain devices like Amazon and all these other units out there like Kobo, for example, they really do push manga at you because in Japan they read a lot of manga. So the way it's laid out will be a little bit different based on the market you're in and certain things will be a carousel and will not be a carousel like that. You go ahead and click on something, it'll give you all the volumes, you can download a sample, you can say want to read, and certain things will be in certain languages as long as you choose it to be that way. So for example, the publisher only wrote it in Japanese, so it'll only be in Japanese. But the elements like this at the bottom where it says search and manga will be in the language of your operating system. So if we go to the library and we look at a book, we can see that we have the little prints here and you can turn pages like that. You can do long presses. Long presses will do look up, highlight, note, and search. You can box a large amount of area. You can change the font up here as well. And you can change the background so it's easier on your eyes. Black is arguably the best for your eyes because it eliminates majority of the white and just 
has the white assigned to the text itself, which is way easier on your eyes. I like this one, which is kind of like an off tan. It's really cool. You can also change it to vertical scrolling. So you can just kind of scroll the book like that and never actually change a page, which is kind of cool. You can choose that if you'd like. You turn the brightness up and down like that for the video. We'll keep it like that just so we can properly have not a lot of issues and you have different fonts as well right here now there won't be any way for you to sideload in apps traditionally but you can discover more reading applications on the apple store if we go to manga because it just looks so good we have to look at it so you can swipe like this and it shows you a thumbnail list of all the manga that you're going to be able to see right here you can swipe left and right like that. It goes page by page. You can do pinch and zoom and kind of get that bind in there. And you can rotate the entire device like so. So you can have a two page spread, which is kind of nice because then you get that little page curl animation and it flips over. Manga is really good on this. I mean, obviously it's not an e-reader. Manga traditionally is the best on an e-paper device. I mean, there's progress technologies in Japan that make an actual e-reader dual screen with the hinge made out of actual paper because actual Japanese manga is black and white. So you don't need a very expensive LCD LED tablet like this to consume black and white content. That's why traditionally it looks really nice on an ebook reader, a 10.3 with a dual kind of split view like that or a 7.8 just in portrait looks fantastic. However, this looks good too. And the beauty about manga on tablets is that it's always ready. Look, I can just do that and zoom in and see exactly what it says. Those difficult Characters are called kanji, derived from the Chinese language, and those smaller ones are called furigana or furigana, that actually translates the kanji if you don't know what the kanji says. So it's for beginners. I can't read all that, so I'm not looking down on anyone, and I'm glad that those translations are there. And maybe on a small manga at a store, you might not be able to see it easily. But that's where LCD tablets come into play. They're very easy to zoom in and change your experience and be like, what did that guy look like? Oh, look, he has a scar. Little things like that you can only do on devices like this. Bridging into our next section comes the Apple Pencil. Thank you to Apple for sending this to us as well. You can twist off the top and you'll see that that is the little transmitter there. Don't touch that. You can, but obviously just don't goob it up. And when you tighten it down, there will be a little gap there, about a one millimeter gap. So don't be scared and don't try to over torque it so that it's closed. It's meant to be there to handle a little bit of flex. The pen itself is completely matte with a nice texture to it and a nice line here with a magnetic snap that snaps to the device in order to sync it and charge charge it. You also get eraser capabilities and a tap capability. But first you have to sync it to the device. And how you do that is you grab the unit like this and you snap it to the side. Doing so will say Apple Pencil, 100% charged, just like that. It'll actually say that on there because the pencil won't work inherently right out of the gates. Once it is connected, then you can use it like so, which is really cool. A lot of devices are kind of always on, like an active capacitive pen, sometimes they have a button, or like a Wacom pen, but it adds a little element and a little personal touch that you have to snap it to the side in order to make it work. I think that's really nice. With the stock Note app, you get marker, highlighter, and fine liner, and you get five colors, black, blue, green, yellow, and red. Yes, LCD is nowhere near being able to compare to color E ink. LCD will always be superior until we get to a point where refresh is as fluid as anywhere between 30 to 120 refresh rate. It's just never going to add up. It's never going to match up. So you can click some things around the top here. You get the three dots to do scan, pin, lock, and delete. You can send a copy via certain applications, your mail application, etc. You can click here to get more pen settings down below. And you can click here to scan text, scan documents, take a picture or video, or choose photos from the unit itself to plant on here and take notes. You'll notice some things down below here. Click on this one. You get that. Click on this one. It's more of a marker. And you click on this one, which is a 5.0, and it'll be more of a thin line like that. And you can get the eraser as well. You can also double tap the pen. As you see there, it toggles between the eraser and the last pencil used. So you can go pencil, pencil. Oh, I made a mistake. Tap, tap. And you can do the eraser. Now, Wacom does not allow you to do that at all. There's no consistent always on trigger. You can 
press the button on a Wacom pen to erase, but once you let go, it's going to be the pencil again, where this one isn't, it's just eraser. This is actually a toggle between the two, which is very useful, I believe, because if you're in a pen like this, and you have a red pen, and you're grading papers, you're like, that. oh, I, I forgot that one. You know, you don't have to go back to the palette, especially if the palette is closed, which you can do. Tapping that, actually. Then you can double tap and go in between your, your own accord. Look at that. It's so seamless, and it's so quick. And that's where this kind of pencil comes into play. And it is very similar, or I guess the Huawei is similar to this, but it's very similar to the Huawei MatePad paper in that if you were using this on an e-paper device, you'd be let down because this tip is not that great. But for an LCD tablet, it is good. Do you like taking notes on this with this pen? No, it's a flat piece of glass. And this is just a regular hard piece of rubber. It doesn't have nearly any grip, as you can see there. The whole thing is just completely slippery. There's no torque. There's no grittiness. There's no grit to it in terms of like feeling like a two or four thousand grit sandpaper. There's no resistance. There's no feedback into your hand. In terms of a writing feel like a DPT, like a Quaderno, to a lesser extent like an Onyx with a screen protector on it to give a little bit of torque, it's bad. It doesn't give you any realism in taking notes. Is it fast? Yes. Does it have beautiful pressure sensitivity? Absolutely. And you can always do more on an LCD because it's just so quick and it's so fast and you have these vibrant colors. And that's the trade-off of having an e-paper device is that you're limited in functionality compared to something that's always ready and always on. But this is nowhere near a good writing experience. Now they have those screen protectors that people will try to sell you on on those Facebook ads that are very expensive and it makes it feel like paper. It doesn't. It just, trust us. I mean, we're the professionals. It really doesn't. That's just a sales thing. And you can get the same screen protector for $1.95 on AliExpress. So don't buy into those. It really is nothing you can do about this pencil and writing on this unit but it is high quality in its own regard you can take beautiful notes you can do other things like put photos and scan things and things you just typically couldn't do on e-readers Another thing about the pen is that it doesn't last long. It was 100% at the start of just that segment of taking notes, and if you snap it to the side, it's already at 94%. This pen drains battery quicker than any other pen we've ever reviewed or had in our hands here at Goody Reader. Comparing e-readers to tablets is like comparing apples to oranges. They cannot be compared. They're very, very different. They do the same things, but are presented in a completely different way. However, when it comes to on-demand functionality, you can't dispute the fact that a tablet is always going to be more robust, more ready to go, and just simply does more things. However, remember, with tablets you have to charge more frequently, there's more demand on the battery, and of course, your eyes. For GoodyReader.com, this is Peter.